Well, you guys have certainly been asking for this, so hopefully I can deliver. As I had done with my season one reviews, I'm here to once again cover what I personally consider to be the top five best and top five worst episodes of the second season of Powerpuff Girls 2016. If I'm being honest, putting this list together wasn't easy on both fronts, I must say. And it actually went through numerous changes before I was finally satisfied with a set order. Unlike last season where I had more trouble determining what the ranking of the best episodes were, this time around I actually struggled to decide which I considered the absolute worst. I mean, there are some pretty bad episodes in here. You may recall that I mentioned season 2 being better than season 1 on the whole back during my reviews of the earlier episodes, and while I do stand by that to a degree, I've definitely found that after reviewing all 41 episodes, it's certainly weaker than I believed. I guess the season just had a really strong start, but then decided to fizzle out in the second half. Regardless, I just want to thank you all for sticking with me 81 episodes into the series. I know there's a lot of people who've either stopped caring or moved on to something else, and I completely get that. No one should dwell on the same show forever. But these videos are the exact reason why I'm still sticking around. Between expressing my ideas through entertaining videos and reading your own thoughts and comments on the episodes every time I put out a new review, you are what pushed me to keep going. So thank you for that. With that said, let's get right into this. <laughs> but before I get into the list itself, I want to go over some brief honorable mentions. I didn't know hiccups were this dangerous. They are not. In your average, normal, everyday, ordinary. Please explain faster, Professor. A Slight Hiccup is one of those episodes that's just all around decent. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. I mean, I'm not a fan of the hiccup and burp humor because I just don't see how bodily functions are funny, but hey, at least the Nat is in here. He's still one of the best villains the reboot has to offer, so I can't complain on that front. Okay, Buttercup, let's read you a bedtime story. There once was an electron that thought he could, but he wasn't positive. Sugar, Spice, and Super Lice is one of few Fantastic Voyage episodes that somewhat breaks the normal tropes one would find in an episode like this. This felt like one of the few reboot episodes where I couldn't outright predict how the lice were going to respond, if only because the premise has the ability to go in several different directions. Plus, Buttercup isn't the one saving the day for once. <sighs> You guys, there's no such thing as space aliens. You know how I know that? Because there's absolutely zero proof. If you can't see it, it doesn't exist. Despite the blatant continuity error in Blossom's disbelief of aliens, The Blossom Files is pretty solid as a standalone episode. It's a shame that the title is the biggest missed opportunity the series has ever seen, though. Seriously, The Chemical X Files, come on! At least the alien sequence is cool and refreshing, I guess. Bubbles, this is your imagination! Think of something! Okay, I'll try. I got nothing. Imagine that may very well be the best him episode the reboot has ever seen, if only because he doesn't rely on some mystical item to do his dirty work for him. The contrasting color palettes is what really makes this one stand out amongst the rest, if you ask me. It may rip off Powernoia's concept from the original, but I'd say it's still a fair watch regardless. Huh, imagine that. Who is that? Oh, hey, baby! Green one. Wait a minute, her name is Greenwing and she can't even fly? Gotta admit, I've come around to Greenwing quite a bit since my initial review of the episode. The generational clash between elder and child highly emphasizes the differences in how superheroes are viewed by various types of people, which is why I like it so much. Looking back on it, this episode was way better than I gave it credit for, and Edith's sassy personality really steals the show in this one. And as you could guess, I'd like to go over some brief dishonorable mentions as well. Ready or not, here I go! 
Okay, guess you were ready. Maybe this is considered cheating to some of you, but to me these episodes are basically one and the same. And if you've seen any review of mine that involves some sort of romance plot, you already know exactly how I feel about Monkey Love and Bridezilla. The reboot sucks at demonstrating how proper relationships function, and the episodes as a whole suffer just like all the rest. The best part is that the entire special is meaningless at the end of the day anyways because everything is undone in the last 90 seconds of the episode. At the very least I can say I enjoyed watching Blossom confront her own failures in the first half, but that's about it. Jared and Bubbles are so cute together! I made my own dolls yesterday. Aw, I worked really hard on these. Jared issues notwithstanding, A Star is Blossom is not the worst thing this reboot has ever put out. Yes, there are pointless attributes like the three-act structure the episode tries to present only to drop after the first act, but as a whole, there are definitely worse episodes. In fact, there is an episode later down this list with the exact same plot as this one that does it far worse, so I'll be saving my overall thoughts for then. And while the Jared controversy may have spawned from the fantasy sequences inside this episode, the issue itself is more prevalent outside of the show. Oh no, Blossom! What's that behind you? Bubbles, I'm not going to turn around. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna go. Princess ties the Powerpuff Girls to candle wax with rope. If that doesn't define how stupid this episode is, I don't know what will. Why are you so orange? Cause my body is a temple, and everybody knows all temples are orange. Cause all temples use spray tan. <laughs> I think this one speaks for itself. How anybody could have taken one look at Muscle Cup and thought it was a good idea is beyond my comprehension. This is like original movie Sonic bad. Whoa, you got everything in here. Ah, here's that time I beat Abracadabra. Man, I looked so different back then. Initially, I had said Memory Lane of Pain was the worst episode of the season, but as it turns out, I take that back. It only has the worst attempt at preaching a moral of any episode in season two. The episode presents us with the idea that Bubbles has never done anything significant with her life despite other episodes explicitly dictating otherwise, and then tries to play it off as though she's an everyday hero despite the obvious fact that she can fly and shoot lasers out of her eyes. I could go on, but you're better off watching my review instead, so I'll just leave it at that, or else we never get to the actual list in question. Professor, we have completed our mission. Here you go! That's a car engine. I asked you to get the mail. Oh, and this technically doesn't qualify as an episode, otherwise it'd be in the top five, no doubt. But the two minute mini-sode, Bubs and Donnie get the mail, is some of the worst trash I have ever seen from this show. With that said, however, let's move on to the top five. ones for all the marbles. <laughs> We're not playing for marbles, Buttercup. Thank you, Bubbles. I never imagined I'd play Summer Bummer this high on my list, but yeah. After returning to this one, it's definitely worthy of being amongst the best of the season, if you ask me. Flaws out of the way first, yes the beach mayor is a pointless character, yes the bro sharks are obnoxious, yes the professor is useless, and yes it's disappointing the girls play volleyball instead of duking it out in an actual fight. But those things aside, Summer Bummer succeeds at being a great beach themed bickering brawl between the girls and their differing personalities. Very rarely do we get episodes where all three of the girls are wanting to do various activities their own personal way. It's usually either one-on-one -on -one with a third in the background or one versus the other two, but this is one of those few times where each girl has their own way of doing things, leading to constant disagreements as they get in each other's way. I enjoyed this episode more now after finishing the rest of the season because it feels like it could be a classic Powerpuff episode. 
I mean, it's certainly not perfect, but if you tweak a few things here and change a few things there, it's got all the working pieces, a few of them just need replaced. The plot is focused on one story in which the three girls disagree with each other, which creates conflict, an antagonist shows up and causes a greater problem, and there's a battle between both sides as the girls come together in the end to win. I only wish it was a legitimate fight that takes place instead of a game of volleyball, because this was the perfect setup for the three-on-three -three battle that instead results in a sports match. This is also the first episode to introduce the girls' Green Lantern powers getting combined into one giant contraption which really signifies a sense of unity that I appreciate between the three of them. Going from literal lines in the sand all the way to them uniting in order to save the citizens of Townsville on the beach is a pretty big deal. Still, like I said, it's a flawed episode, but it has my respect for showing some semblance of a genuinely pristine Powerpuff experience. I would recommend Summer Bummer, if only to watch how the girls genuinely behave like sisters do. Fighting over petty things because they can't get their personal space, and resulting in a coming together when matters need it most. I'm glad I came around to this one. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna beat around the bush on this one because I've talked about it so many times at this point. I even have a 90 minute compilation video of all five of my reviews tied together so you can go watch that if you want the extremely in-depth analysis of why this TV special event is a colossal failure. That said, yes, I realize I've stated that Find Your Bliss individually is a genuinely solid episode in its own right, but it's dragged down by the other four episodes. And while yes, I could just list Bliss Reminisce as the worst episode and ignore the others, heck, I could even put Find Your Bliss in an honorable mention on the best episode list, they're really only a part of the greater whole. It's the same logic I used for Monkey Love and Bridezilla. It's not really fair to look at these episodes as individual stories because, for the most part, they're all connected to each other. Sans the middle episode, which I think could be completely omitted with minimal repercussions, but that's a minor issue. When looking at Power of Four as one unified entity, which it is since that's how it was marketed and aired, it's terrible. There was no consideration for the show's already established rules, and it even breaks its own rules it establishes itself halfway through the special on a multitude of different levels. Bliss is established to have been born 10 years ago before the girls were created, while other episodes have implied that the girls have been around for way longer than that. Bliss also has powers that are established in episode 2 to supposedly go out of control because she can't contain her emotions, but then in the literal next episode, she can't can't control them because her stress overwhelms her. Well, which one is it? Stress isn't an emotion, it's a completely different sensation of the body. Bliss is established to struggle with being incapable of controlling her powers for over a decade of her life, and then she can just magically use them, no problem, when a flaming tire almost hits a hot dog stand. Him lived on an island for 10 years with Bliss, yet somehow also managed to torment the girls at the same exact time? And for some reason he decided to wait all the way until the events of this special to convince her to join him instead of doing so back when she was younger and more easy to manipulate due to her recent tragedy with the professor. Speaking of him, the professor's entire motive for making Bliss is completely fucked up compared to what it was in the original and makes this character a really shitty person. I mean, he's shitty to begin with, but it makes him even shittier. So many holes, so many terrible writing decisions, and again, I made 90 minutes worth of video on this, so if you really want to hear more about it and haven't seen them already, please go watch my reviews on the five episodes because I'm just gonna end up repeating myself if I continue to talk about this any longer. I am so glad this is the last time I have to talk about this special, and I'm probably never going to touch it again. The reason why it's number five and not lower on the list is because, well, at least the first and last episode do have good aspects to them, unlike the next four entries which really don't have much good in them at all.
Coming in at the number four spot for the best half of this list is Bubbles the Blue. Bubbles the Blue is an episode about depression that surprisingly doesn't flub anything up. A rarity for Powerpuff 2016, if we're being honest here. Considering how many times this show has tried so desperately to make some profound claim or promote some sort of progressive ideal and managed to screw it up somehow almost every single time, it's a wonder the episode about depression actually got it right. I praise this episode for the way Bubbles' emotions are portrayed as sudden and spontaneous. There isn't a direct cause for the way she's feeling as it tends to be for a lot of people who magically get hit with depression on a whim. Sometimes you just feel down for an extended period of time with no real reason behind it, and it can affect you for weeks to months on end. Depression is a cruel beast that a lot of us need to battle with in one way or another. Sometimes there's a cause and sometimes there's not. It's a different case for every individual. But this episode doesn't just stop there. No, it shows us how people who've never really experienced depression before fail to understand exactly what's going on through the characters of Buttercup and Blossom. I know I said this in my review, but despite what the title card color would suggest, this is a Blossom and Buttercup episode, not a Bubbles episode, because it is all about them and their difficulty that they face trying to comprehend what Bubbles is going through. They try so many different methods for cheering her up, none of which end up working, which frustrates them because they hate seeing their sister like this, while they also hate being incapable of doing anything to fix the problem. It frustrates them. They clearly want their sister to be her usual bubbly self, or at least Blossom does, as indicated by the ending. I personally don't really care for the way Buttercup acts, and it kind of undermines the whole message of the episode, in my opinion, but what are you gonna do? Bubbles the Blue does a great job of showing two sides of the same coin and emphasizes how depression can affect both the person undergoing it as well as the people around them. The ultimate conclusion it draws is good too. It doesn't just imply depression goes away in an instant, but rather that the best thing you can do is be there for the person experiencing it and showing your support, helping them with what they need. And that is why I find Bubbles the Blue to be such a genuinely, shockingly good episode. It may not be a very Powerpuff episode, but certainly a good cartoon episode. And then Malin said that I was faster than a cheetah that really has to use the bathroom. Derby Dollies, on the other hand, is a garbage episode. In fact, it is the amalgamation of almost everything wrong with this series, comedically speaking, dialed up to the 11th degree. Remember how I said A Star is Blossom was a tamer version of another episode featured on this list? Well, this is the episode I was referring to. They are the exact same premise with the exact same progression in the exact same plot with a different coat of paint and some unnecessary gags thrown on top of that mush. I asked this in my original review, but how the hell do you manage to screw up an episode the second time around. You see, A Star is Blossom, Jared issues notwithstanding, ended with a lesson where Blossom realizes Bubbles earned her spot in the play fair and square. Yes, she may be a little jealous, it's okay to feel that way, but she needed to learn to accept that she can't always get what she wants. Well, Derby Dollies decides to completely contradict that and preach the exact opposite to us. The idea that if you don't get what you want, sabotage the person who has it until they feel terrible for doing nothing wrong just so you can selfishly obtain it in the end. Okay, so which one is it? Should we accept we can't always get what we want or bitch about it and treat people like shit until we do get it? Make up your damn mind. And it's annoying because in Blossom's case, she is acknowledged to be in the wrong, which is morally correct and the side that I perfectly agree with. A star as Blossom hit the nail on the head in that regard, and Bubbles had every right to be upset with how her sister was acting. I'd be pissed too if someone tried to sabotage me out of getting something that I earned fair and square. Derby dollies? Nah. It just makes Bubbles feel bad and pretend to fake an injury so Buttercup can play even though she's done nothing deserving of that. So not only does Buttercup once again get biased treatment towards her, Bubbles' character is contradictory and inconsistent. Over 80 episodes in and the series still manages to find new ways to suck. Like honestly, it's impressive that it's capable of surprising 
surprising me with its sheer ineptitude at this point. Derby Dollies clearly never learned what the word repercussions meant, because unlike how Blossom learned her lesson in the end, Buttercup just gets the ability to play Death Ball again handed to her as if she never did anything wrong and proceeds to save the day as if she is meant to be the hero of the story. It is another case where Buttercup is this infallible being while Blossom gets treated like dirt. And she literally gets treated like dirt in this episode, by the way. Yeah, Buttercup's my favorite in the original, but I hate her guts in the reboot because she keeps hogging all of the attention. And I know the reboot has a bad habit of overdoing running gags, but this episode goes above and beyond. With the stock images of animals that show up on screen with these countryisms, the characters keep vomiting out. It's not funny. It's not clever. It gets old after the first one, but seven times? Who laughs at the same joke after the seventh time? Not to mention that the episode also shoves in another running gag about Blossom fighting Tankenstein. Like, no, stop, please. This is too much. You're forcing way too much humor into this episode. Mayland is a shitty friend to Buttercup too, and it grinds my gears how she completely neglects her for the sole purpose of putting Bubbles in the number one spot on the team just so she can get jealous. And while A Star is Blossom does this too, it's at least to a lesser extent. One thing this reboot fails to understand is that just because one person is better than you at something doesn't suddenly mean you're worse than everyone else. Sure, it's entirely possible the characters could have been a little intimidated and that would cause them to be thrown off their game, but this could have been a story about overcoming that intimidation and regaining your footing and learning to deal with the fact that, hey, you're not the best on the team anymore. That is something worthy of respect, and the episode goes out of its way to try and make Blossom or Buttercup look pathetic in a manner that is just so unbelievably exaggerated. And it's not like a positive hyperbole either. It completely forces the plot to go in an unnatural direction that really doesn't suit the characters. Easily one of the worst episodes of the season, no doubt. Thank you guys so much for watching this far into my video. Unfortunately, because of how long many of these entries are, I've decided to split my list into two different videos, just like I did with the season one list. With that said, this is the end of part one, so be sure to click on the card at the end of the video if you wish to continue on to part two. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in that video.